Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Wow, what's going on this week? Well, today at the time of this recording is December 21st and is the first day of winter solstice. So for us, that means it's our longest night and our shortest day of the year. Um, I think our temperature today dropped down to a balmy minus 42 degrees. That's Celsius and Fahrenheit because I believe at minus 40, they're the same. So we've been in a little bit of a deep freeze this week. However, uh, Christmas Day is going to bring some plus temperatures, which is above freezing for us. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, speaking of Christmas, we've just got four days left. So I wanted to take this opportunity to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. I hope you enjoy the holidays, however you celebrate that. I hope you get to spend time with your family and your friends, eat lots and just enjoy the season. In today's video, we're going to start the first piece for the third room in the Homestead House, and that is the living area. So in this house, the largest room in the house was used for a combination of a few different things. Um, at one end was a small dining area where my grandmother kept her oak dining room table. I don't honestly recall ever eating at that table. I think it was reserved for fancier company than me, but the table was certainly there. Um, I'm happy to say that that table actually is still in the family. I think it's the one piece um, that remained in our family after my grandmother and my uncle passed away. So I have a cousin who's given that table a home. Um, this table actually had two leaves uh, that went in it. However, I never saw it with the leaves in and because of the size of the house and everything else that I need to put into that room, I'm just going to make the table as if the leaves were out. Um, so we'll be doing that in today's video. Besides the dining area, there was an actual living space. Um, there was my grandmother's rocking chair. There was a TV in the later years. And then it was also the bedroom for my uncle because this was a one bedroom house. And my uncle had a pull out sofa kind of bed tucked in the corner and that's where he slept um, for most of his life. So there'll be a lot of mishmash of things that are that's going into this room but I'm excited to put those together as well. So having said all that your cutting instructions for the table will be in the description below and we'll have a quick look at the materials and the tools that you'll need for this build and then we'll get started. Okay, like a lot of pieces in this particular project, I've had to use a few different types of materials to make this table. Um, I don't always like to do that because I think it overcomplicates things, especially if somebody is watching and trying to replicate. But I'm finding more and more with this project because I need to be so specific about how things look um, that sometimes I have to improvise and just use what I have to to get the look that I want. So having said that, um, let's start with the wood. So I've got a couple different types of wood. Um, I have the 1 32nd of an inch or one and a half millimeter wood. I have the 3 32nd of an inch or three millimeter wood. I'm also going to be using a small piece of foam board and a much smaller piece than I have here of, um, I think this is one millimeter, maybe one and a half millimeter chipboard. Um, and I'll explain that as we get into the project on what those are for. Um, I've had to also try and find some wood grain paper, but if you're painting, you can skip that and you can just use paint. Now I'm using this leftover piece of wood grain paper that I had from a kit. I don't know that you can buy it separately to be honest with you so um, I'm pretty sure that most of you won't have that but um, there are some other alternatives which I'll explain as I get to that part. Um, I'm also going to be using some wood stain and of course my glue, my setup blocks for weighting things down. Um, I'm also because this table is round I have this very cheap dollar store geometry set and I'll be using the compass so that I get a nice round circle for the table. Um, some sandpaper, my ruler, pencil, my X-Acto knife or craft knife. I have a brush 
for my stain and then I also have a little pair of scissors. I'm also going to be using four of these little tiny eyelets and those will be for the feet on the bottom of the table. Having said all that, let's get started with the project. We're going to start with the tabletop first. So you can go ahead and pull out pieces A, B, and C. So A and B are your two wood discs and piece A is slightly larger than piece B. So we're going to start with piece B and the foam piece and those two pieces should be the same size. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to glue those two pieces together. I'm just going to use some tacky glue to do that. So I try and do this as quickly as I can because the glue will warp the foam board if it if you take too long. So I'm going to take those two pieces, put them together, and then I'm going to weight them down with my one, two, three blocks. That way they'll dry nice and flat. And now that that's dry, we'll add piece A on top of that. Now piece A is a little bit bigger than the circle because I do want it to have a little bit of a lip all the way around. And so I'm just going to go ahead and glue that one on just the same way as I did the bottom piece. And just like with the first piece, we're going to weight it down and make sure that it's nice and flat as it dries. I'm going to go ahead and stain this piece next before I go any further. We'll bring in our wood grain paper next. Now this wood grain paper that I'm going to be using, I actually got in a kit. Um, it was uh, the Little Simon's Coffee House, if you've ever seen those um, on Instagram. And this was left over from that project. And so this is what I'm going to be using. Now this is not probably easy to come by. Um, and so if you're looking for another alternative, sometimes you can buy scrapbook paper that's a wood grain, or if you have access to a dollar store, um, I know in our dollar stores here in Canada at our Dollarama, they sell these um, wood look sheets and they come actually in uh, four different patterns per box, but this is what one of those sheets of paper looks like. Now it is a little bit shiny um, and you know it doesn't have like the texture of a wood grain, but it certainly does have the look of a wood grain and that will work just as well I think um, for what I need to do around the edges. Um, and if I didn't already have this piece, this is probably what I would use. So this whole box, and there's 15 sheets in a box, was $1.50 at the dollar store. So you might want to check out um, the Dollaramas or the Dollar Trees in your area and see if you can find that. So for me, this one is the better option. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a couple of strips the width of this piece so I'm going to include the foam piece as well as the bottom piece of the wood and I'm going to cut strips and then glue them onto here so that this piece looks like it's wood as well. So I've gone ahead and cut a couple of strips. If they're a little bit too wide, that's okay. You can trim it off after you've glued it on. That's not going to be a problem. You just don't want them too narrow. So I'm going to take these strips and all I'm going to do is I'm going to use some tacky glue and I'm just going to glue them around the edge like that.
there's our oak table top. So we'll get started on the base of the table next. So for our base, we're going to need pieces D, E, and F. So you should have two of piece D, two of piece E, and one of piece F. So I'm just going to put piece F off to the side for a minute, and we're just going to work with these four pieces first. And basically all we're going to do is build a four-sided box. So we'll take one of our pieces marked D, and basically we're just going to take these two E pieces and stand them up on end on either side, and those are going to go on top of piece D. Now, if you've been following my channel at all, you know how often I use these one, two, three blocks. I use them for a couple different things. I use them to square up my projects and I use them as weights if I'm concerned about warping in any way. There is a cheaper alternative because these blocks are not cheap. They're probably, I think I paid 35, maybe even a little bit more for the two blocks. Um, but there's a fellow Canadian miniaturist. Her name is Fatima and she has a YouTube channel called Vancouver Dollhouse Miniature Show. And what she uses for keeping things square are these giant Lego blocks. And it really is so clever how she uses them. And I would recommend if you're um, interested in seeing an alternative to these blocks that you pop on over to her channel and watch some of her videos because I think you'll be um, quite pleasantly surprised at how well they work. Um, so if, um, if I can, I'll try and put a link to her channel down below in the description and then you can pop over and have a look. Okay, so let's put on the second side onto this little box. And lastly, we'll put the top on. I always try and scrape away as much of the excess glue as I can, especially if I'm staining. Um, if you're painting, it doesn't really matter so much, but if you're using a wood stain, wood stain will not stain over glue. Um, so you want to get as much of that excess um, glue that's squeezing out the corners and out the cracks and take as much of that as you can off. Um, another option if you forget and realize after it's dried is you can just do a, a little bit of a sand and uh, you can take that off that way as well. So there's my little square box and this is going to be the base of the bottom of the table and then we're going to also put some legs on here as well. And now that that box is together I'm going to put the bottom piece on. So this is going to be basically to close off the space, obviously, because we don't want to be able to see up into there. Um, but it also gives us a little bit of a ledge for the feet to sit on. So I'll just add my glue on all four sides. And then this would be your piece um, F. And we're just going to put that on top. It will sit overhanging just a little bit on all four sides. About a millimeter all the way around. And then just set that aside to let it dry. 
Okay, so here we have the legs for the pedestal. Now, because I'm recreating a piece and trying to be as accurate as I possibly can, I was not able to find the right shape of legs um, in any kind of uh, miniature store shop. So I had to improvise and make my own. I tried originally to make these out of wood. I had no success. It's very difficult to cut wood on an angle like this, especially um, the thinner wood. And what was happening was every time I would get it almost cut out, um, I would put just a little bit too much pressure and the leg would crack. And so I decided to use chipboard instead. Um, it's much easier to cut. And generally when it's doubled up, like it will be here, it's just about as strong as wood. So basically I started with just a little piece of cardstock and I cut out the shape of the leg that I was looking for. You don't have to, you don't have to go with this shape, obviously. Um, if you have some pre-made legs and you want to use them, great. <laughs> I'm very jealous. Um, or if you want to do just straight legs off the table, you could do that too. Um, or, you know, whatever works for you. But this is the only way that I could make these um, legs and still make it look like the original table. So I cut out my template from the cardstock and then I laid that cardstock onto some chipboard, traced it with a very sharp pencil, and then cut those out with an X-Acto knife. And so this is what I have. I have eight pieces. And what I also had to do was on the end that attaches to the table, um, I had to sand it down on an angle and that's about um, a 90 degree angle there we go so one part of that leg um, was angled off to the left and one was angled off to the right and in between those two I have a pretty close to square shape and that's going to sit against the corner of this base like so so um, I'm going to, first of all, make sure that my pieces match or don't match, as I should say. Um, I'm going to glue these together and then I'm going to sand them so that I get rid of any ridges um, and make it look like it's just one piece. I'm just going to use some tacky glue to get those together. You don't really need to worry about excess glue with these pieces because we're not actually going to be staining them. We're going to be using our wood grain paper to cover them. So we're just going to get them as close and as tight as we can. And then I'm weighting them down under my blocks just in case they decide they might want to curl up on me. I'm going to put a layer of podge on these before I add the wood grain paper. I think it's just going to add one more layer of strength to the legs. And as this dries, I'm going to do all sides, including the sides that are cut as well. Okay, we'll let those dry. Okay, so now we're going to cover each side with this uh, wood grain paper. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glue. I'm going to put it down on the wrong side of the paper. I'm not worried about the shape of that paper yet. I will cut it off once it's dry. 
I'm just going to do that to all four pieces. So I'm just going to take my X-Acto knife and very carefully trim off the excess. Okay, so it has a really nice wood grain look to it. So I'm going to do the same to the other three. Now we're going to do the exact same thing, just on the other side of the paper. So I've cut some strips now of that paper and I'm just going to go over the edges now of these legs. The only piece that I'm not going to cover is the piece that attaches to the base of the table um, because then I'm sticking paper on and the paper could very well let loose. So that's just going to remain the, um, the raw chipboard. I'm going to do this just a little bit at a time. Um, because it's just a little easier to hold down that paper into the curves if you're not having to hold it on every surface of that piece. So we'll just start here. Hold that there and then just start working the paper down onto the curves. And then I'll just keep applying glue and just keep moving forward towards the other side. Okay, so this is one piece completed, and I've put that paper on all four sides, with the exception of the end, which I've already talked about. So we're going to do that to all four of the legs, and then we'll move on to the next step. The last thing I want to do to this before we move on to the legs is I do want to stain it. And I'm going to stain it now rather than after the legs are on, so that I'm not getting any stain on the legs. Just these are going on the corners, and this bottom piece, as I said before, is on there as a finishing, obviously, for the bottom of the table, but also as a guide for these legs to sit down flush against. So, put that there. go from opposite corners just because I think it's a little easier
to make sure that the line is straight. Okay, moment of truth. A little bit wobbly, but not too bad. Could just be my mat as well. It's a little bit uh, warped as well. Let's see. I think it'll be okay. Okay, so on the bottom of these, I also want to just add some feet. Last step, we're going to attach the pedestal to the table. I drew out where the center was on the table and then uh, made sure and measured to make sure that I was going to get it in the center. All right, well, there's the oak table done. That actually went really smoothly. I was actually a little bit nervous about the table um, because I wanted to make sure that I was as close to it as I could come and it actually came together quite nicely. I'm happy with that and that brings us to the end of this video um, in the next video I'm going to be building some chairs to go with the table um, I haven't yet decided if they're going to be made out of wood or chipboard or a combination of I suspect it'll be a combination of um, because they do have rounded backs the backs of the chairs and I have yet to figure out how to bend wood. I know that there's a way, um, I've just never done it. And so um, I'm probably gonna use chipboard for those types of pieces. But we'll get to that in the next video. I hope you enjoy the holiday break and we will see you in the new year. Bye now.